Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So today in this video, we'll talk about the direct shear test and we'll try to cover some technical details regarding the direct shear test. So first of all, uh, it is very important to understand the importance of direct shear test. So this test is normally used for the determination of the shear strength parameters. So the purpose of this test is to determine the shear strength parameters. Shear strength parameters which are which are cohesion and angle of internal friction cohesion and friction angle so these are the two parameters which are determined using the direct shear test now what is the shear strength and why we need to determine the shear strength parameters so let's understand that what is the shear strength so shear strength is the capability of soil to resist against the slide sliding so capability of capability of soil to resist sliding is known as shear strength of the soil shear strength of soil so it is it is normally denoted by symbol tau and the unit can be in kpa or pounds per feet square as well and based on the mohr coulomb law we can present the equation for the determination of shear strength as c plus sigma than phi so this is the equation that is used for the determination of the shear strength parameter so before discussing the technical details of uh, uh, the shear strength uh, let's try to understand why we need to determine the shear strength parameters so basically these shear strength parameters are used for the design of geostructures geostructures means pile foundations shallow foundations slope stability and design of embankments etc etc so these are the fundamental parameters which are used for almost for the design of almost every structure related to the geotechnical engineering so that is why we need to determine these parameters and direct shear is one of the technique that is used to determine the shear strength parameter there are other techniques as well which are used for the determination of shear strength parameters like triaxial testing and ucs as well so now let's move ahead and in the end uh, uh, we will try to understand the graphical or more technical definitions of cohesion and phi as well so according to mohr coulomb model so according to the mohr coulomb model cohesion and angle of internal friction can be interpreted as these are the mohr circle if these are the mohr circle then the y intercept then the y intercept is the cohesion and this slope of this line this tangent line is known as the friction angle so this is the simple definition of the mohr coulomb model so cohesion is the y intercept of the tangent drawn on the two circles and these circles are plotted on a graph in which along x axis we plot the normal stress and along the y axis we plot the shear stress now let's discuss 
that how this test is performed and how the results are interpreted from the direct shear test. So firstly, we need to have a soil sample. Soil sample and the soil sample can be in disturbed state as well. Disturbed state and undisturbed soil sample. So if we have the undisturbed soil sample, we'll simply trim the undisturbed soil sample according to the size of the mold. And if we have the disturbed soil sample, then we have to remold our soil sample. And we have discussed the concept of remolding of soil sample in our previous video. You can watch that video in order to understand that how the soil sample is remolded and what is meant by the remolding of the soil sample. So remolding of soil sample. Remolding of sample. A remolded sample will be used in that case. So after the preparation of soil sample, in direct shear test, what we do is we apply the normal stress that remains constant and then we apply a horizontal force and we observe the failure point of the soil. So after the preparation of soil sample, we place the soil sample in a shear box assembly. Let's assume this is a shear box in which a soil sample is placed like this and the dimensions of the ring can vary. It can be 60 centimeter dia soil sample with the 2 centimeter of height. It can be a square soil sample. It can be a, a circular soil sample as well. So we uh, place perforated porous stones at the top and bottom of the soil sample. Then we apply a constant normal stress or normal force sigma and we apply shear force, shear force with a control strain rate. So this shear force is applied to move the upper half of the soil sample while the lower half of the soil sample is remain intact. So a point where the soil fails is recorded as the shear stress corresponding to the particular normal stress. This normal stress is anticipated from the design or it can be applied to develop the failure envelope. For example, in the first trial, we prepare three soil samples, three or four soil samples. with the same conditions with same conditions same conditions means same same moisture content and density we prepare three soil sample and when we we perform a first trial on the first soil sample. We apply, let's assume, 50 kPa normal stress that remains constant. And we apply the shear force and we observe the failure point by recording the load dial, uh, by dial reading and the displacement dial reading. Then we apply another uh, normal stress of 100 kPa and we record the shear force maximum shear force. Then we apply the 200 kp normal stress and we apply the shear stress or shear force and we determine the maximum shear stress that is required to fail the soil sample under 200 kp normal stress. And this is how the procedure and this is how the test is completed in three trials. So after completing these three trials, we have, we have the observation data. Now let's understand that how we perform the calculation on the observation data. 
So for the first trial, first trial, we applied normal stress of 50 kPa. We recorded, we recorded the displacement, displacement and shear force, shear force for a 50 kPa. We determined the displacement, we recorded the shear force values, then we convert the shear force into the shear stress, shear stress. And we determine the maximum shear stress value uh, against the 50 kPa normal stress. So let's assume we obtain 30 kPa of maximum shear stress corresponding to the 50 normal, 50 kPa normal stress. And similarly, we obtain another, uh, we obtain another shear stress value against 100 kPa normal stress. Let's assume that is 60 kPa of tau, tau against 100 kPa and similarly we obtain a value of 80 kPa against 200 kPa normal stress. So we obtain these three values of shear stress corresponding to three different normal stresses. After obtaining these values, we need to plot the graph in order to determine the shear strength parameters. So let's assume we have these three assumed values and we need to know we need to plot a graph between the normal stress along the x-axis that is in kPa and then tau in kPa along the y-axis. So corresponding to 50 kPa value, we have let's assume 30 30 kPa shear stress. Then corresponding to 100 kPa, we have 60 kPa shear stress value and we'll plot the point over here. Then corresponding to 200 kPa normal stress, we have this value of 80 kPa shear stress. Now we have three points. What we will do, we'll join these points through a best fit line, through a best fit line. Then we will obtain the y-intercept, y-intercept and that y-intercept will be known as cohesion and the angle of this slope will be termed as fric angle of internal friction. So this is how we obtain the uh, shear strength parameters using the direct shear test. Now there are some certain points which needs to be uh, understand uh, while performing the direct shear test. Firstly, when we will terminate the test for uh, any particular trial and what are the limitations of the direct shear test? Now you have understood that how the shear strength parameters are obtained from the direct shear test. So let's move on. So now termination of test or termination rules of direct shear test. So the first point is if if it is a strain and here we have the stress stress and if the stress increases with the strain and point reaches beyond which there is a decrease in the stress although the strain is increasing, then you will stop your test after obtaining three to four readings. So this is the first criteria uh, for the termination of the direct shear test. And the second criteria is, second criteria is, if your stress remains constant, although the strain is keep on increasing, then after three to four values, three, to four constant values of the stress you will stop your test and the third criteria is to have the 20% strain if the 20% strain is achieved in your soil sample you will terminate your test so i have uh, explained this uh, this terminology in my previous video of tri test you can watch that video if you want to understand 
uh, in a more comprehensive way that what is meant by the 20% strain. So these are the three criteria through which you can terminate your direct shear test. Now let's discuss, uh, discuss some of the limitations of the direct shear test. Although I have already discussed the limitations of direct shear test in the triaxial test and the first and the basic limitation of the direct shear test is to have the predetermined failure plane. In direct shear test we obtain the predetermined failure plane. It means we already know the already know the failure plane direction but generally soil fails along its weakest plane not along the predetermined failure plane so it may not be the it may not be the weakest plane of the soil so soil fails in this way in direct shear test because the lower half of the soil sample is intact and we only apply the uh, uh, the shear force on the upper uh, uh, and the upper half of the soil sample is allowed to move in response to the shear force. Sorry, it may slide in this way in direct shear test, but this may not be the weakest plane of the soil sample because soil fails along its weakest plane. So this is one of the limitation of the direct shear test. That is why we need to perform the triaxial test. Second limitation is we cannot uh, have the pore pressure readings, pore pressure reading or pore pressure measurements in the direct shear. Pore pressure measurements. Third limitation is the exact field simulations. So we cannot exactly simulate the field conditions in the direct shear test. So these are some of the limitations of the direct shear test. Uh, conversely, there are some benefits of the direct shear test and the benefits are, it is quite simple and this can be performed in a very quick or short interval of the time to obtain the shear strength parameters of the soil, although it involves some uncertainties. But considering the uh, the time and cost effectiveness of this test, this test is very useful. Otherwise, we have to perform the triaxial test and it is more sophisticated test and it, it may take uh, weeks to complete. So therefore, we prefer direct shear test over the triaxial test. If we are not uh, concerned about the uh, accuracy to a large extent. So these are some of the details of the direct shear test. In, in the end, there is one more point regarding the direct shear test. In the direct shear test, you must know, uh, you must have the curves, stress strain curves like that. For 50 kPa normal stress, for 100 kPa normal stress, uh, this is strain, this is stress. 200 kPa normal stress. So your shear stress value must increase with the application of the normal stress. With the increase of the normal stress, shear stress will definitely increase. So if you obtain a graph like uh, in the 50 kPa, your shear stress value is higher than the shear stress value at 100 kPa, then it means your uh, the, your test performance is not accurate. So you must consider these points as well. Now, let's discuss another technical point uh, related to the direct shear test. If I redraw the graph of direct shear test interpretation in which there is a normal stress along the x-axis and shear stress along the y-axis and like I draw three points and I draw a best fit line in which the cohesion was the y-intercept. Here we can define cohesion is the shear stress at which the normal stress is zero. So at sigma is equals to zero, tau is equals to cohesion because tau is equals c plus sigma tan phi. So you can see if 
sigma is 0 then tau is equals to c so cohesion is the uh, the shear stress at which the normal stress is 0 and conversely if if there is no cohesion and there is only friction angle then shear strength will be the function of friction angle and normal stress only so these are some technical details of the direct shear test i hope you understand uh, these points and if you understand if you like the video i hope you like the video if you like the video don't forget to subscribe share thank you and allah hafiz